Hello. <laughs> Just a very quick one from me uh, to say to everybody that I missed the Katie's Arms last night. So, so sorry uh, to have missed the Katie's Arms, which you'll know is normally at eight o'clock on a Friday evening. So eight o'clock on a Friday evening, we have our online pub at uh, Katie's Arms. And if you haven't been before, um, it's a pub that we've had going since before lockdown. Really just a place that everybody can come together and have a laugh. Mostly at me, actually. <laughs> so at me or at the madness of the world that we live amongst. Um, and we've been doing this as much as we can for about three years. It might be more now. And I missed last night. So, so sorry. Thank you um, for joining me on here now. You guys said, oh, we're in Paris. Oh, hello from Ibiza. I love that we're all over the world all the time. Um, I also wanted to sort of say to you, and you can see here if you look down, if people can say hello from where they are. Um, much of the time you're made to feel like you're super alone. Um, and if you look here, um, you'll see that you're not, that we are so many and we're all over the place. And the thing that joins us together isn't where you come from or what you think or what your politics are or what your religion is or whether you're a lesbian or you're gay or whatever. Um, what joins us is that we just want everyone to be all right and we just want everyone to be as free as they can be and as happy as they can be. And that is it. That's it. And usually it does involve laughing at me and the ridiculousness of my life. Um, but there was something I wanted to just mention. Hello, New Zealand. Wales is here. Medway. Um, very quickly, we were just, I was just chatting uh, with somebody lovely and we were talking about some people in uh, lives that can make your life, you, you know, they always sort of, oh, they really get to you, you know. And uh, there's people who you don't realise it, but they make you feel anxious or stressed or unhappy or less good about yourself and what can happen sometimes I'm going to demonstrate this using this <laughs> is that you're going about and you're okay but this person will come along and they will they're a friend so they sort of identify as your friend but in reality they sort of use a moment with you to sometimes make themselves feel better by making you feel worse or by telling you something that at the heart of it isn't really that kind at all, or are trying to sort of take some of your power from you by telling you something that takes away from you having a good day, right? It takes away from your power of your day. And an example of this would be in my first marriage when my husband ran away. <laughs> Understandable, obviously. Some friends would come up to me and say, oh, I heard... Damien was and I'd be like Phew. and initially I would let them tell me stuff and it would be hurtful and I'd be like oh I didn't really want to know that and eventually you realize right that you have to stop this you have to stop these friends telling you stuff that actually they know is going to be hurtful they know it will upset you but they're enjoying telling it they're enjoying having the currency of that moment to tell you they're going to enjoy your reaction to it and then they're going to have the currency of your reaction to it to share with the friendship group that you think you want to be a part of and the truth is you you don't need that you don't need to be someone else's currency. You don't need to give someone else your power so they have this currency on you to go and sell into the WhatsApp group. Oh, I was talking to so-and-so and she said diddle And I told her that Dee now does this and you should have seen the look on her face and yibbity wibbity wop. And that's a circle. You think you want to belong to that because you think that's your friends. Whereas in fact, you're just like a power thing like a power socket you know like those power packs and people are plugging into you and that's fine because that's the transaction we have but you have to decide who you want to give your power to and who you want to help charge up and who actually you're better off keeping your power to yourself with and so maybe you know next time you come away from something and you feel a bit like oh, or a bit deflated, maybe that is the thing to think about is, wait a minute, why did I let that happen? Why did I let them tell me that thing that just kind of upset me or made me feel a bit less? 
You know, why did I let them say, oh, did you hear Damien, blah, 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 blah. Or did you hear that your old friend did it? He said this and she did that. And, and you've got to sort of think, why did I allow that to happen? And how can I kind of stop it? And the way I learned to stop it quite early on, and it's something I still do, is someone would come up and say, oh, did you hear? D-? And as soon as I feel it coming, I say, oh, do you mind? I'm going to ask you not to tell me that. Don't add anything else, because the other thing we do, I do, you can see, is um, blah, 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 talk a lot. But if you close something down, you can do it without being mean and you can do it. But the key is not to use too many words. So to say, oh, do you mind if I ask you not to share that with me and leave it? And if they say, oh, but I wasn't I wasn't meaning anything. I wasn't meaning anything. I didn't want to upset you. They'll try and explain themselves because they did mean something by it. They did look to upset you. They knew it would upset you. That's the uh, body lotion bottle. And they still did it anyway. And what you're making them do is own that. Can I ask you to hold that and own it? You don't have to add that bit. Own what you just tried to do. Own that you tried to make me feel less. And that's okay. But know that I know. So that was just a little chit chat we were having and a thought. And I think it's um, important. Someone's saying here, you don't have to Um, you don't have to explain yourself. You don't. You can just say, I'm going to ask you to hold on to that Um, and not need to hear what they want to tell you. You don't always need to know that stuff, actually. Sometimes you're more powerful without it. Anyway, I wanted to explain my absence yesterday. I was stuck for eight hours on the M5, mostly pissing in bushes and sunbathing in my uh, panda um a car not an actual panda from china china and i will let you know that the infectious tour dates that all that we have at the moment are up and we are always looking for venues that have got balls uh we just need venues that when one little insipid leftist go oh but one time she said this and they they don't run away so there aren't that many venues out there with balls. Any that are, I'm coming to. And if you want to join me on the road, if you go to Katie's Arms, like the pub, katiesarms.com, uh, lovely Mark has got all of the tickets up there. And I know that we've just added a date in Exeter, a very, very limited uh, ticket run there. But um, so thank you so much. Um, I'll see you in Swindon. Oh, my God. We just sold out at the Wirral. Uh, We've got, I think it's six tickets left. They might have gone in Torquay and we've sold out in Newcastle. I think I'm coming to the fringe. (laughs) Don't tell the leftists. (laughs) They're literally going to have a hernia out of their rectums. (laughs) And I'll see you uh, somewhere on the road. So I hope you all have a great day. And remember, hold your power and say to someone, I'm going to ask you, to hold that thought. Put your eyes to the sky, put your little chinnies up, in my case chins, put your boobs up to the sky, nipples upwards, and march forth about your day as if you know what the fuck you're up to, even though none of us do. Okay, see you soon. <laughs>